So the Indian teacher Abhayakara Gupta is extremely important in uh, in uh, Indian Buddhist uh, uh, tantric literature. Very important uh, person, and he lived in the. 11th century, possibly the uh, late uh, 10th century. He was a teacher at uh, Bodh Gaya. He, in fact, he was an abbot of Bodh Gaya for a period of time. Um, and he was a teacher to many famous Tibetan teachers and, uh, and translators and Lhotsawas. So why he's important it's not so much because of the art, but it's because of the uh, uh, it's because of his legacy uh, in literature and then the artistic traditions that descend from him in terms of iconography. Now, first of all, how is he depicted? Well, we do have him in art. We have him as a primary figure. We have him as a secondary figure in lineages. And then we have uh, Abhayakara Gupta as book illuminations and block print images as well. Now, in terms of being a primary image, we really only have one example for this. And what I mean by one example is one composition example with many, many paintings. Um, because in the... 17th century, Abhayakara Gupta was appointed, was uh, um, selected, was placed as one of the pre-incarnations of the Penchen Lama of Tashi Lumpo Monastery. And we've already discussed Sakya Pandita, and Sakya Pandita was also placed as a pre-incarnation. Um, and, and don't think it's strange that all of these great people are pre-incarnations of the Penchen Lama, because many, many individuals were selected to be the pre-incarnations of the Dalai Lama as well, such as uh, Chogyal Pagpa, um, the student of Sakya Pandita, then is a pre-incarnation. Uh, Dromton, the main student of Atisha, is a pre-incarnation of the Dalai Lamas. So this is a common phenomenon that we find in the, in the 17th century. So Abhayakar Gupta is... Um, is uh, placed as a pre-incarnation of the Pension Lama, and then, as we talked about Sakya Pandita, then uh, a set of paintings were done at Nartang Monastery uh, in the in the early 18th century, and from this came a set of block prints uh, or or woodblock carvings to make prints from, and so we find many many examples of this set of Pension Lama pre-incarnations, and then. Um, the current uh, Panchen Lama at the time, and then they added uh, they added paintings to the set uh, later on. So it's a very common to find the set of Panchen Lama incarnations, and it's very common to find this particular compositional format of Abhayakara Gupta. So he appears as a monk. He's wearing a red pandita hat. We have a Vajrayogini in the upper left corner. We have a Mahakala in the lower uh, right corner. Um, and, and he's often, and he has a, a snake uh, to his side. And I don't know the meaning of the snake, and I don't know the meaning of the narrative vignette in the lower left corner, uh, but possibly it relates to his life story, which I have not read. But... Abhayakara Gupta is known by some other names. He's also known by Abhayadatta and by Vajrasana. Now, it's important to understand that Vajrasana is not actually a name, it's a title. So all abbots of Bodh Gaya, all abbots of Dorje Den in, in uh, India have the title of Vajrasana. So we have a lot of abbots who were named Vajrasana, but Abhayakara Gupta is one of them. Now, as a Bayakara Gupta, he's very famous for the Vajra, uh, Vajravali set of, of uh, initiations and uh, deity descriptions. It's a very, very important set of uh, tantric initiations that are passed down in Tibet even to this day. But he's also uh, a Bayakara Gupta as a Bayadatta is known as the author of one of the famous uh, books giving the biographies of the 84 Mahasiddhas, the 84 great Mahasiddhas. So we, we have we have these two things um, 
that he's especially famous for that relate to art, because we have many, many sets of paintings that depict the Bhadravali mandalas, either single composition for one mandala, or we have uh, four mandalas per composition. We have many different sets uh, from early on, generally, generally starting in the uh, early 14th century for this. It's possible we have some in the uh, late uh, 13th as well. And then, so we have the Vajravali, but then we also have the 84 Mahasiddhas. We have many, many painting sets as well as single paintings with all 84 Mahasiddhas uh, contained. So, so all of these are coming down from this famous uh, Indian uh, scholar of uh, Bodh Gaya named Abhayakara Gupta. Now, we should not confuse the Vajrasana system of the 84 Mahasiddhas for Abhayakara Gupta, uh, because there is another abbot of, uh, of Bodh Gaya or Nalanda. At the time, we don't know. We don't know which one it was, because we have Vajrasana the Elder, Vajrasana the Middle, and Vajrasana the Lesser, or the Younger. So we, we have a number of Vajrasanas that we have to try and fit into this history, this period of the 10th, 11th, 12th century, and it's a little bit complicated. But Abhayakar Gupta is, uh, is important. He's important for a number of different uh, different for a number of different reasons, and we do have a lot of paintings of him, but all in the same exact composition as one of the pre-incarnations of the Penchen Lama.